Okay, um, so today we are going to start a new unit and I have a trusty lab that I like to start this unit with and I found something that's pretty pretty close. And so I'm going to show you guys how to do it on Pivot Interactives um, and then let you guys go on doing some measurements. But I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough first. So I want you to just watch what I show you and then, and then you can go ahead and get started. And there should be links in Google Classroom or if you go to um, Pivot Interactives, you should be able to access it there as well. Let's see. So to do this, I'm just going to share my screen with you because Google Meet is not doing what I expect it to do. All right. So you should be able to see my screen now. Um, and what you're going to do is this lab called Copy of Const Constant Acceleration Dry Ice Puck on a Ramp. It says Copy of because that comes from the Pivot Interactives library and um, when it saves to my my library, it saves it as copy of. So there's some objectives listed here. I think that's mostly for me. Up at the top, there's this really cool little video on how they make the dry ice pucks. So if you have the power tools, you could make them at home. I think that it looks pretty cool. I don't know if I could pull it off at school, but but it's, it's fun to watch. And there's a little bit of a get, getting started activity here, just to make sure that you understand how to use the platform. Um, students last year found that there was a little bit of a learning curve with this, because even though I think that I find it pretty intuitive, if you've never done it before, there's some things to know about. So the things to know about is when you see a large image like this, frequently it's gonna be a video. And so you can control the video with the controls down at the bottom. And these look pretty familiar. Repeat, backwards, play, forward. And then this black bar here is so you can actually control the progression of the frames. So if I select this triangle, it'll move across as the puck slides down and the video runs. I can reset it by using that button and I can play it if I want to. You can also, if it's paused, grab this bar and move them move it backwards and forwards, which is really nice because you can control what happens with the video. Some other things that you can change and that you'll probably be asked to change um, is how much mass of a block of dry ice you're using as well as the ramp angle. So if I change this, I have to click load and then it changes this. So this is a much shallower angle. and I could play this and I'm probably gonna see a different relationship between the distance traveled and time. All right, so I'm going to change my ramp, ramp angle back to nine, like it was. <clears throat> there we go. I'm going to move the apples. It's not letting me. Sometimes it lets you move that stuff. Move this guy. Nope. Okay, so um, if we want to measure things, the, the goal that we're going for here is we want to understand the relationship between the distance traveled and the amount of time that's passed. And so if we were doing this in class, those would be our variables. What's the relationship between distance traveled and time? In order to measure that, we are given some tools. So up here across the top, if you click on the little tool icon, you can get a compass. So with the compass, you can measure um, the angle of the ramp. A good way to do this, remember, just like whenever we measure anything else, we want to make sure that we're consistent with what points we're measuring. I like to put the little dot down here at the corner of my compass right on top of the ramp, and then I can measure the angle there, and it looks like it's right about 22. So if that's useful to you. There you go. Um, the other thing is to measure distance, I am given this uh, this meter stick here, this ruler. Uh, we It's actually in centimeters. It gets to a meter and 1.8 meters. Um, but, you know, I if you stick this on here, it's kind of difficult to measure the distance down the ramp. And so what we're going to do instead is we're going to grab this thing and rotate it so that we can sit it right there on top of our ramp. So you can put it wherever you'd like to put it. My recommendation would be that you put the beginning of it at the beginning of the meter stick, either at the beginning of the block or at the end of the block. And then make sure that when you're measuring the change in the motion, how much distance is traveled, that you measure the same point on the block with every measurement. So that if you allow this to run and the block slides down, that that you measure it, you measure where the block is for at the front or the back, depending on what, what choices you've made about your measuring system. Lastly, you're given the ability to measure the amount of time that's passed. So just like in our other lab where we did the buggies, you're going to measure, um, you're going to 
either choose a set amount of time that's passed and then measure the distance or choose a distance that changes and measure the time. And that's how you're going to keep track of that. One kind of neat thing about this clock is you can reset it. So if I click on the little watch, it'll reset it to zero and it'll say this is frame zero. But then if I go backwards, it'll give me negative values for that. So remember, you can't actually travel backwards in time. You can kind of here, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's counting it for you. Um, but what I would do is figure out what frame it is where the puck starts moving and use that sort of as your baseline for where zero is because you want to actually be measuring it while it's in motion and not a time before before our helper here has cut through the string because you're you're going to get a better graph if your puck is already in motion uh, you'll be asked questions through here some of them are multiple choice and some of the questions are things that you need to fill in um, the blank for. So down here, there's a little place where you can record your, let's see, this says um, record what mass and ramp angle you used. So you put it in there. Um, and then it gives you an opportunity to lock your answer and continue. What that does is it sets, it sets all your responses in the initial parts so that you can't change them later. Um, sometimes that's, that's helpful if you're setting up an act if you're setting up an experiment in Pivot Interactives where you, that stuff shouldn't change, and that way it'll record it for you. Um, another is sometimes it'll ask you to predict something, and it just wants to make it so that it's not possible to go backwards and change your prediction, because that wouldn't make any sense. So if it's if it's a prediction, you know, don't worry about so much if it's right or wrong. Worry about if your prediction makes sense. Uh, you guys will be collecting data in this activity. You'll be creating graphs. You'll be interpreting your graphs, um, just like we would be doing if we were in class. Now, I'm not expecting that everybody's going to get this done during this class period. I'm not really sure what the time length is to expect, but I know that sometimes um, with these Pivot Interactive activities, if we haven't done one before, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And so a lot of today for you guys is going to be practicing using the Pivot Interactive's um, platform while you're working on an activity. And that's okay with me. What I would like for you to do today is spend about 45 to 50 minutes working on this.